Uh, I'm Derek Elin, and this is my presentation for EDU 707 on virtual and augmented reality in art education. Um, you uh, might notice that I'm shooting a video where I'm projecting uh, a uh, presentation, and in fact, depending on the device you're using, a desktop, a uh, phone, or even a VR device, um, you should be able to look around the space. Um, so uh, I'm off to your right. Um, if you are using a desktop, just use the mouse, click the center of the video, and drag around to kind of uh, pivot the camera. Hi. Um, if you are on a phone, you just move the phone around. You might have figured that out already. Uh, and then you can also view this uh, through like the YouTube app on a VR headset. Um, so uh, in this presentation, I'll focus on um, virtual reality and augmented reality in art education. I'll talk a little bit about different tools. Um, one of them, of course, is the 360 camera that I'm using right now. Uh, if you look to your left, you'll see the packaging for it. It is a Kodak PixPro Orbit 360 4K, and um, it's uh, you know a lower end um, camera. It does what it's meant to, uh, but it's not like a uh, an 8K 3D um, you know kind of situation. Um, so uh, a little bit of background. Um, the idea of virtual reality um, has been around for centuries, just in the sense of um, immersing the viewer in something greater than uh, what you normally expect. Um, so uh, the idea of a stereoscope, um, which this, you know, of course isn't going to work if I put it up to the camera, uh, but a stereoscope is this really old-fashioned device uh, that has, you know, two lenses, um, maybe in some ways looks like a VR headset, uh, and then you have a double image uh, that is not literally a double image, it's like a left eye and a right eye photo. So it basically is 3D, a really early 3D photography. Um, uh, the idea of virtual reality in education, um, you know, obviously the Oregon Trail is pretty primitive compared to what we think of as being virtual reality, but the nature of it is kind of the same. Uh, the idea of a virtual simulation um, that sort of transports the user uh, to a different you know, time and place um, and has uh, some interactive qualities that make it immersive when printers going off. Um, and then, of course, uh, early prototypes and, and primitive VR headsets have been around uh, for decades. Um, so um, it's not like a super new thing. Uh, now, when we say virtual reality, we, of course, mean uh, a head-mounted display. Generally, uh, other attributes are um, you have um, three-dimensional uh, vision, um, so binocular uh, vision. Uh, you have um, head tracking, so when you move your head around, uh, it moves with you. Um, and then we have, um, you know, some other things like being able to control it or being able to move throughout the space, which those aren't necessarily universal. Um, there's also augmented reality, uh, which is kind of considered its, you know, sister or cousin technology. Um, augmented reality involves using um, some sort of camera or screen or, you know, pair of glasses or something uh, and being able to see the real world, uh, but then a um, sort of digital uh, projection of an illusion of something else being there that isn't really there uh, is um, on top of it. Um, and then again, we have 360 video. Um, so um, this is being filmed on a camera that's essentially two cameras back to back, one with a wide angle lens and one with an ultra wide angle lens. And then the in-camera software kind of stitches them together. Um, so you might notice if you look, you know, probably somewhere around here where I'm waving my arm, uh, my arm might get cut off a little bit if you look directly at it. Um, and that's because the stitching isn't perfect. Uh, it's a simple device. Um, <clears throat> So um, as far as hardware, you could kind of consider three tiers of commercially available VR. Uh, one would be like the Oculus Rift or the HTC Vive, which is going to run $300 to $800. But then on top of that, you have all sorts of peripherals. And then you have the you know, $1,500 gaming PC that you're going to need to be able to run it to any you know, satisfactory degree. Uh, then you have things like the Oculus Go or the Samsung Gear VR. Uh, where there, it's a little simpler, you don't have movement throughout the space, uh, but you do have like a controller to engage with uh, whatever apps you're using. Uh, if you look kind of behind you and to your left, uh, on the stool there, the gray thing uh, is, a, is an Oculus Go. Um, and I use that in my classroom sometimes. Uh, and then um, simpler, more rudimentary, but still uh, a lot of potential uh, with uh, Google Cardboard, which is like a $15 thing, it's behind you and to your right. Um, and you stick a phone into it, it's made of cardboard, 
Um, you don't have, you know, as much control over it. Generally, you have like a button on the top of it that will just tap the screen to engage with whatever you're doing. Um, but still, uh, you still have head tracking. You can still have apps that um, show three-dimensionality. Uh, so, yeah. Um, so, uh, Bodakar uh, in 2017 says, Virtual simulation technology has the ability to alleviate issues with cost, time, and space uh, that so many educational institutions experience. Um, the idea of, you know, what I'm doing right now, although I'm kind of just experimenting and filming in VR, um, if, uh, for instance, I'm a science teacher and I'm doing a science lab, um, if uh, for the sake of a student who's maybe absent and I'm going over really important things like safety, it could be beneficial uh, to uh, do that lesson uh, in VR uh, and essentially let the kids sort of catch up by viewing it um, and then they can familiarize themselves with the space um, you know, without me having to kind of repeat the entire spiel um, and I can kind of go around from place to place to place. You know, over here is the eyewash station, uh, right over there is, uh, you know, the, your supplies and that sort of thing. Um, so um, along with that is the idea of like field trips. Um, you might not be able to take your whole class on a field trip to the museum because you might not be able to afford it. And granted, VR costs money, but it might cost less than that, um, especially if you're going to do multiple uh, in a year. Um, there is a question of immersion, the uh, Crumpton and Harden study from 1997, which was a while ago, um, involved a cereal packing plant, a virtual cereal packing plant, um, and the point was to uh, get industrial design and engineering students uh, to evaluate the ergonomics of a workspace using VR. Really, they were kind of more evaluating VR's ability to, you know, let them have a fair evaluation. Um, and even as far back as 97, 90% of students found it to be an effective, fair way of evaluating. Um, some did report issues with the control scheme, but one could imagine that controls have come a long way since then. Uh, and the, the idea here is that this is as far back as 1997, when VR was you know, considerably more uh, rudimentary um, than what's even commercially available now. Um, so um, immersion, I think, is, um, is definitely at a point where it's not an issue. Um, and uh, even, even with something primitive like a Google Cardboard, um, there is still something to be said for 3D and head tracking and um, that sort of thing. Uh, there was a uh, study by Stuart and Thomas in 1991 uh, that um, conceptualized uh, VR in education um, and, and what are some, you know, some ideals uh, regarding it. Uh, and the, the big ones had to do with virtual exploration of and interaction with people, places, and things in the patient, independent of location, scale, and time. Um, so there is a, a Bodocare says uh, that Labster, um, and uh, I looked into some of their apps. Uh, it's basically a science uh, app, and they have like a variety of things uh, where they can, uh, they like replicate labs, and um, uh, he cites their ability to shrink the user to the molecular level uh, and explore simulations on the micro level. Um, so, you know, some of them, again, are going to be about lab safety in a virtual environment. Others have to do with you're right in, the, in there hanging out with the bacteria, um, which obviously isn't something that you can do no matter what your, what your budget is. Um, in terms of art education, uh, Siegel cites 360 video as shared experiences and storytelling um, and virtual museum tours. So obviously a lot of the same implications for uh, broad use in education are true of art education. Um, and then we also have like fully virtual digital recreations of spaces. Um, so uh, some of those uh, might include, and I'm going to um, pull from the um, Oculus website. Uh, these are actually the apps that I have, and of course some of them are games. Um, but some of those uh, include things like uh, the MOCA, um, the Museum of Contemporary Art, uh, right here. Uh, their app is a digital recreation of a Carrie James Marshall exhibit. Um, there is also a thing called the Sch uh, Stadel Time Machine, uh, which is the Stadel Museum in Frankfurt, Germany. Um, you actually go back in time in that and um, sort of check out the museum and its collection uh, from when it originally opened. Um, and then there are other uh, apps like the Kramer Collection, Art Plunge, and Meeting Rembrandt, um, and all of those are on here, um, that are more speculative in nature. Um, you know, like for instance, the uh, Art Plunge app uh, is where um, there are a series of famous paintings, and when you're in the app, um, you're seeing an artist's interpretation of the famous painting. Um, so uh, any images or video that I'm playing are just directly from the, uh, the website of the product, so 
you know, it's in terms of crediting, it's, it's from the website, just free advertising. This is from Oculus.com. Um, so yeah, you uh, end up inside this famous painting, kind of looking around as though it is a three-dimensional space. Um, so uh, in terms of, uh, you know, again, the idea of taking it on a field trip, um, I myself have used uh, the Oculus Go in my classroom uh, with students who, um, you know, I have a, an assignment called the Art Experience, and uh, students have to go out into the world and experience art in some way.